Let's say you've got the following Boolean expression to simplify. X and Y, or not X, Y, or not X, not Y. Now you could do some transformations with Boolean algebra, like doing distributive, and then negation to cancel out one of the terms. And then the other distributive, and then negation again, to arrive at the final answer. So we know that this expression simplifies to y or not x. Now what Carnot maps lets you do is write this expression as a picture, and then the answer almost jumps out right at you. Let's see how they work. This is an expression involving two variables. Now if we were doing a truth table, we would arrange them vertically, going through all four combinations of the variables. x, y, x, not y, not x, y, and not x, not y. In a Carnot map, we arrange them in a two by two grid, with each dimension representing one of the variables. Let's put x on the side, and y across the top. This top left-hand cell is the intersection between x and y. If you recall, in Boolean algebra, multiplication is kind of like and, and it also means intersection. Likewise, addition kind of means or, and it's kind of like union. The top right cell is the intersection between x and not y. The bottom left is not x, y, and the bottom right is not x, not y. This top row is the union between x, y, and x, not y. Using the distributive property, this simplifies to just x, so this entire row is represented by just x. Likewise, this entire bottom row is the union of not x, y, and not x, not y, which simplifies to just not x. The whole left-hand column simplifies to just y, and the whole right-hand column simplifies to not y. Finally, the entire grid is the union of all four cells. This simplifies to just one. If we have three variables, I suppose we could draw some kind of cube with each of the dimensions labeled with one of the variables, and then identify each one of the cells as the intersection of three of the variables. But the problem with this is, you know, the cube is kind of hard to draw, and there's a cell in the background that we can't see. It's down here in the lower left-hand corner. It's behind the front. So what we're going to do is take this back row and flip it around to the front. In other words, we're going to draw the grid flat as a two-dimensional picture. It ends up being a two-by-four grid with one of the variables down the side and the other two variables across the top. Now watch the way they get labeled here. The first one here is yz. The next one is not yz. The third one is not y, not z. And the fourth one is y and then not z. This is a gray code. A gray code is a way of writing down binary numbers so that only one of the bits is changing at a time. So let's label each one of the cells with their variables. The top left is x, y, z. Next one is x not y, z. The next one is x, not y, not z, and x, y, not z. Bottom row is done similarly. Following the line of reasoning from the previous screen, the top row here is just x. The bottom row is not x. This left-hand column is just y, z, which is what it's labeled with at the top. The next one over is not y, z. The third one is not y, not z. And the fourth one is y, not z. Now here's the interesting thing. This square on the left-hand side is the union of all four of these cells, or you can picture it as being the union of y, z and not y, z, which is just z. This square on the right is the union of all four of those cells, and it is just not z. The square in the middle is the union of all four of those cells. 
it comes out to be not y. There's a fourth square here. It extends off the left-hand side and comes over to the right-hand side, and it is just the y square. And then finally, the entire thing, as before, is just 1. So this sets us up for using Carnot maps to simplify Boolean expressions. Join me in the next video where I solve an actual problem involving two variables using a Carnot map.